Good morning, sir. If you could, please tell us your name, spell your last name, and position. Uh, Rick, R-I-C-K, Romero, R-O-M-E-R-O, -E lifeguard lieutenant, sending a fire rescue. Thank you, sir. We're at the scene in Mission Bay of what was a search and rescue, and it turned into a search and recovery. Can you talk about it? Um, yes, we started a call around 9 o'clock this morning of a person possibly missing in the water, a scuba diver, uh, Mission Point in Mission Bay. Um, took the information from an actual dive group that was supposed to meet this person in the water. 
Uh, that never happened, so they, after a while, uh, they called us and reported the person missing. So we arrived on scene, evaluated uh, the reporting party, find out what's going on, got all the details, and start uh, initial search, calling in lifeguard resources, and starting uh, an in-water search from there. Um, after a while, the uh, lifeguards on basic just snorkel and mass, doing some surface dives, really locate something in the water. One of the guards grabbed a uh, scuba gear, went down below about 15 to 20 feet of water, and located the person underwater and brought them to the surface. And then we do what we do. We do our best job to give someone a fighting chance. We get them back on our boat, take all the gear off, start CPR immediately, and then bring them back to our reception dock where we have medics uh, awaiting for them. And then we just work on the patient as best we can until uh, more help arrives. Uh, we have fire medics here pretty quickly. Uh, they started taking over all the uh, medical treatment and the person was pronounced here uh, as deceased. Okay, now we understand, we heard over the radio that he was an instructor and it was a training group off of Mission Point, which is directly across from your headquarters. So you even called in the Coast Guard helicopter to help search, but it was the uh, divers that found him? Yeah, it was your lifeguards who were doing just some active searches, free diving basically with mass and snorkel, looking around. That's what we do in the best in the water is look around, find people, uh, and then they're able to locate them. The water's about you know, pretty shallow, 15, 20 feet. Pretty good visibility, about 10 feet. Um, so they saw some kind of shadow there. It was a little too deep for them to go down free diving, so they asked for some assistance from scuba gear. Just go down rapidly, check it out. That's what they did, and then try to give them the best chance we can uh, getting them back. But uh, unfortunately, uh, the person was pronounced here uh, after quite a, some time. And underwater. the victim's in his 70s? Yeah, male victim in his 70s. Uh, that's all we have right now. Okay, anything you'd like to add, sir? Maybe about not diving alone? Um, you always want to dive with a partner, absolutely. Uh, and then have a plan, especially if you're diving with other people in case, you know, a backup plan, an emergency plan, if something happens. Uh, but the best thing to do is also notify the authorities so we can kind of get there quickly, assess it, and then help people out the best we can. So uh, definitely want to have a dive plan and a backup emergency plan when you go diving. So from the time he entered the water and disappeared, and the time you found him, it had been almost two hours that he was underwater. It was close to two hours, yeah. It's been some, some, some time underwater, unfortunately. Sir, thank you so much for your time. You're welcome.